What is up, my friends and family? I'm Charmix. Today, I'm gonna be reacting to My Random Thoughts, uh, James Edition by The Odd Ones Out. Now, I'm not really sure what to expect from this. Uh, I reacted to an Odd Ones Out video not that long ago, and it was pretty funny, so I'm hoping this one's gonna be quite funny. And, uh, yeah, with that being said, the original link's in the description. Make sure you go subscribe to The Odd Ones Out, and without any further ado, let's begin! I'm sort of stealing this idea from Jaden Animations. Wait, no, that's not right. I'm not stealing it, I'm plagiarizing it. Jaden did a video talking <laughs> about random thoughts she had, and you should all go watch it, and I thought, hey, I think randomly sometimes. So Jaden, is it alright if I make a video about my random thoughts? I hope you say yes, because I just did. What is happiness? Well, it's a chemical in your brain. And how do you get that chemical? Well, it's just a little something I like to call drugs. I think humans make fun of hairless animals way too- Okay, what? I mean, there are a lot of things that make me happy, and none of them include that. Too much. We think that all hairless animals are ugly. Just go to Google Images and type in hairless animal, and you'll probably think the animals you see there are ugly as well. But we all seem to forget that we're hairless animals too. If anything, other animals should think that we're ugly. So I look at this phenomenon, and I have a theory. I think we humans find things covered in hair more cute. We're more attracted to things covered in hair. I think I made this point in, like, the last video I reacted to from the Odd Ones Out. But, you know, people with hair are considered not attractive, but people, you know, without hair are considered more attractive. But, you know, that's reversed when it comes to animals, because animals with more hair and are fluffier, they're adorable. But animals without hair are friggin' terrifying. And that's why I'm a furry. My dad never taught me how to shave, and one time I cut myself shaving right above my lip, and for the rest of the day, all I could smell was blood. I don't know why I mentioned the dad part. You know how websites will ask you to type in a bunch of misshapen <laughs> letters to make sure you're not a robot? That's called a CAPTCHA. And some of those CAPTCHAs are impossible. Sometimes I look at a CAPTCHA and think, am I a robot? I just wanted to send some email. I didn't want to question my identity. I wasn't ready for an existential crisis club penguin. Sorry, that joke is dead. Just like Club Penguin. So here's the no. <laughs> rip. random thought. What if we lived in a robot society and robots had to prove that they weren't human to make a Facebook account? I think their capture would be an optical illusion. Like to sign into a website, it'll show two lines and say, prove you're not a human, which line is bigger? Optical illusions are like captures for people. Every time you paint a room, it gets a little bit smaller. And if it takes you one can of paint to paint an entire I guess that's true, actually. I never thought of it. If you're painting over top of another layer, that's gonna add another layer to that previous layer, and that, in turn, will make the room just a little bit smaller because, you know, there's one more extra layer of paint on it, which means the walls are, like, thicker now. Your room, and the room gets smaller by one can of paint. You brought a can of paint inside the room, and you never took it out. Every time you smell something, Molecules from that thing get sucked up into your nose, and that's how you're able to smell it. So that means every time you smell something, it gets a tiny bit lighter. Do archaeologists have lingo and joke? How much lighter? Because it can't be much. It can't be much at all. Like, if you wanted to, could you take, I don't know, a brownie? And instead of actually eating it, just smell it, and eventually it would shrink to the point where you can no longer smell it. So you basically eat it that way? I mean, would that work? Jokes that only other archaeologists will understand. Like, there's a whole other world of jokes that I won't get to experience because I'm not an archaeologist. Like, one day, two archaeologists could be digging a hole and one says, I'm not finding anything! And then the other guy says, Well, you know what they say in the archaeology business. And I don't know what they say because I'm not an archaeologist. <laughs> you look up jokes for archaeologists. Why did Robin Hood pull out of the archery contest? He found it an arrowing experience. Okay, get that one, it just wasn't that funny. Nor was it about archaeology. Or maybe it was, and I just don't get it. We'll never know. Where did Caesar- Well, that's the same with a lot of careers. If you specialize in brain surgery, you're gonna have jokes with people who also specialize in brain surgery that people who work in gynecology won't get, or vice versa. I mean, if I work at McDonald's, the people I work with are going to have different jokes than the people who work at friggin Taco Bell or something like that. Caesar keep his armies up his sleeveys. Okay, I had to get this one explained to me, but <laughs> armies is supposed to be your arm, like your body arm, and your armies <laughs> go up your sleeveys. Get it? 
except Julius Caesar wore a toga, so he didn't even have sleeves. And you could just say this about anyone who had an army. Where did Hitler keep his armies? Up his sleeveys, ha 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 When you ask someone what time <laughs> it is, sometimes they'll say, it's a quarter to blank. And first off, I really hate that way of telling time, because now I have to use math just to know what time it is. I feel the exact same way, the exact same way. My mother does that a lot and it drives me crazy because then I've got to be like, well, a quarter, that's like what, 15 cents? What is a quarter? Is that 15 cents? Quarter two. Yeah, it'd be fifth. No, no, it's not 15 cents. What am I? Oh, I'm losing my mind. Wait, isn't a quarter 25 cents? I am lost. But no, but if you say a quarter, that's one fourth, which means that it's 15 minutes two. See, this is exactly what I have to deal with. I'm already getting confused. Someone will say, it's a quarter to eight. Okay, so a quarter to eight, well, a quarter is 25, so eight minus 25, it's like negative 13. Wait, no, we're using time numbers, so a quarter of 60, that's- Exactly, that's, this is exactly what just happened to me, like, 30 seconds ago as I was trying to explain it. It's like 10 minutes, so eight minus 60 over four, you carry the two and- Oh, it's eight o'clock now. We usually only say it's a quarter to when referring to whole numbers, but I wish people would use other times, like, Hey, what time is it? Oh, it's a uh, quarter to 837. Did you know that mosquitoes <laughs> prefer type O blood more than any other blood type? Does that mean our blood tastes different? How can mosquitoes sense what blood type we are? Do mosquitoes think we come in different flavors? What if there was a- Is that, is that true? That they, you know, go after certain types of blood over other ones? It's freaking racist. Restaurant for mosquitoes, and the menus just had our blood types. Are there mosquito snobs? Like, one mosquito would say, Oh, I see you're drinking O negative. Hmm. Of course you'd like that blood. Everyone likes that blood. <laughs> I got that whole idea from a conversation I had with Jaden, and I said I was going to use it in my random thoughts video, so I'm just stealing everything from Jaden. You know what I think would be a funny contradiction? A fedora with a Tumblr logo on it. Whenever you leave for a trip, <laughs> people will say, Drive safe, which is fine. I always appreciate safe driving tips, but when you go flying in an airplane, sometimes people will say, have a safe flight, but I literally have no control if a plane flies safely or not. Why are you telling me to fly safe? I should be the one telling the pilot that. Hey, I just wanted to say that a lot of my friends are counting on you, so you better not screw this up. I appreciate the sentiment, but how do I fly unsafe? That's a good point. That's a really good point. And that's the same with taking a bus. Because you're not in control of the bus. And buses are very unsafe because they don't even have freaking seatbelts. Which I don't understand why they are exempt. I mean, buses get into crashes. And when they get into crashes, you know, there's a higher chance of people not surviving. So yeah, I mean, you can't really control it. Maybe go on my phone before we take off. Not watch the safety video blow the plane up? Why do people care so much about fashion? If I bought some really nice clothes and I go to a party, out of everyone in that room, I'm the only one who can't see what I'm wearing. Unless I look down the entire time. I can go to a party and be wearing just a bunch of clown makeup, and as long as there's no mirrors around and everyone plays it cool, I would have no idea that I'm wearing anything. <laughs> and also, it doesn't matter what I'm wearing because I look good in everything. I think this whole YouTube thing has given me a confidence boost. I wouldn't say it's an unhealthy amount, but it's given me confidence that I didn't have in high school. My parents bought me a Pokemon shirt for Christmas, and yeah, I like Pokemon, but I don't want the whole world to know that. And in high school, I wouldn't have worn any remotely geeky shirt, but now I can go outside and not even realize that I'm wearing my Pokemon shirt. And I don't know if that's related specifically to high school or just being done school. Because in high school, there are a lot of societal, like, um, expectations that, you know, you're expected to abide by. But when you finish high school and you're just within your little group of friends, if you manage to keep them, then it doesn't really matter what you dress like or how you act because you don't have a lot of like people around you who have certain expectations of you. Sure, I mean, in society you will have them nonetheless, but there are a lot less than when it comes to high school. When you're put into the real world, things change and you can dress basically however you want and not that many people are gonna care in real life. So there's a huge difference. When I do realize, I usually think, huh, that's embarrassing. Ah, I'm the odd ones out, who cares? When my parents were my age, they already had a child. And here I am, wearing a Pokemon shirt. You know how different states <laughs> in America will have different names for certain things? Like some states call it pop instead of soda, or how they call it a washroom instead of a bathroom, and apparently in Rhode Island they call a water fountain a bubbler, and everywhere else is just normal. Anyway, once I heard that down south, there's a phrase for when it's raining and the sun is still out. 
And that phrase is, the devil meeting his wife. Oh, what? isn't that so sweet? I've never heard of that before. Sweet? That means anyone can find happiness, even the devil. I love it when we give the devil more innocent and human characteristics. And given how few of times it rains in Arizona, I don't get to use that phrase very often. So already when it's raining, it's like, Woo, it's raining! This day is gonna be great! But then when the sun's out, I get to say, Look guys, the devil's meeting his wife! I hope they're happy together. Unfortunately... I can't get over the style of animation that the Odd Ones Out uses. Like, it's so adorable, and it's really simple, it's not like crazy, right? I mean, if you just look at this, it's basically a marshmallow character with some shading, and that's about it. And it looks adorable like this. I misheard what that phrase was when I learned it. It's not the devil meeting his wife, it's actually the devil beating his wife. What? Yes, they're not happy together. I was- <laughs> What? Wow, that took a turn. So sad when I learned what it actually was. I don't know who this devil's wife is, but you need to find a new man, dude. And to think, I almost thought of you as an alright guy, Satan. I looked up that saying on Wikipedia, and in Tennessee they say, the devil is kissing his wife. So I guess in Tennessee, the devil's romantic, but everywhere else he just can't stand her. And the worst variation I could find has to be what they say in France. In France, when it rains and the sun's out, they say, the devil is beating his wife and marrying his daughter. Whoa, France, I'd expect that sort of be- France took that to another level, oh my goodness. Wow, you just had to add the incest, didn't you? You just had to add it. Why, why did you have to do that? Behavior from Tennessee, but not you, France. Why do you have to be so dramatic to describe your weather? I don't want to even know what you call snowstorms. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked this video. This was awesome and very funny and so adorable. And a lot of the points that uh, the Odd Ones Out brought up are great points. And uh, yeah, nonetheless, I hope you guys like this. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, possibly share with a friend if you knew, and subscribe to join the family today. And also make sure you go subscribe to the Odd Ones Out. That link's in the description. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Boop!